it is Stephanie from the Canadian Schoolhouse. And today I'm doing a video. We've usually been doing these live streams every other Wednesday for a little bit now and continuing far into the future. But today is a very special day, April 5th. Not only is it extremely special because it's right after Easter, which I hope you all had a wonderful time with family and celebrating uh, the, the death and resurrection of Jesus and what he did for us. Um, and it's such an exciting time for us to have this starting in April. So we have just launched a art contest for all you homeschoolers out there and yes even parents so we have got four age categories um, and parents being the the oldest one so uh, all you creative parents or you ones uh, parents that maybe want a reason to be creative this is your chance so all April long we are accepting submissions for our art contest and we call this show how nature grows so in your submission you need to somehow depict, de depict nature in its uh, wonderfully springy time right now um, of, of growth. So there's so many different ways to do that. And I'm not going to even really talk about the possibilities because there's so many. But most importantly, um, is the is the discovery and the exploration, and all that great things of nature. Um, just go out there and explore that great creation that God has put there, uh, especially for us to learn about and explore. And as all you homeschoolers out there know, that is a great uh, science topic. And um, we have also added a little something. Even if you don't think that you are going to um, enter the contest, you, do, you don't think you'll actually have an art submission to put in, I want you to go to that contest page and Christine in the background is going to put up that link there to our contest page and it has all the details, all everything you need to know um, on that page but it also has a, uh, you can get a download of the ebook called Creative Nature Study. This is usually in uh, the Old Schoolhouse store and it is uh, just a little over $12, $12 US in the store. But as long as you go to that page and enter your info there, you're going to get that book for free. And it is it is a fabulous, um, it is, oh, I forget the pages. Is it 100? It's over 100 anyway. I'm thinking it's like 108 if my memory serves me right. Um, but it's got lots of great things. It's got things for a scavenger hunt. It's just got lots of opportunities and inspiration to just go out and and be in nature and uh we also hope that inspires you a little bit to enter our contest as well so every monday we're going to be here at 2 p.m uh through the month of april so we're going to have four weeks that we're here and in those uh different times i'm just going to highlight uh each of those different art media submissions so this week is going to be photography but just to give you a little a little peek into the future here we also uh, are so we're accepting photography submissions we're um accepting videography so you can take a one minute or less video um you can uh have a um drawing and painting so draw any kind of dry like charcoal pastels uh, um, just 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 pencil crayons just pencil anything for any medium you want to use to draw with or or painting so you can do a drawing or painting something that is depicting the uh, show how nature grows uh, theme of our contest and then um, creative writing so we didn't want to leave out that one uh, as well a real form of art send have a have a poem or just a short bit of a bit of text that you can um, submit to, uh, showing showing how nature grows and there's all our submission tips on there everything that's on our website so today I'm going to share just a little bit about um, photography so a few little photography tips tips when you uh, submit your entry it needs to be one megabyte or less now lots of times if you are taking a picture that picture is going to be bigger than one megabyte um, sometimes a lot bigger sometimes a little bit bigger and if you can get it even a, a little like quite smaller than one megabyte that's that's great as well like don't don't let it lose the quality of that photograph you've taken I'll, I'll also mention um, that you are able so if you want to go in a uh, photo editing software because you've taken different pictures of of something in nature and maybe throughout April you're following along along that growth and we're gonna see uh, tremendous growth 
from the beginning of April to the end of April. And this, it doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to take several pictures of something growing in nature. But if you happen to do that, you can use a video editing, or sorry, not video editing, um, a photo editing program to be able to j just blend those images together. But what you really need to show is your, um, is your skill and your attention to actually taking the photograph right the photograph with that with a camera so um you can uh you can approach that in in quite a few different ways um it can be just one single picture too but just to allow for a bit more creativity if uh if that's where your creative mind is going you can have a few different pictures in one just don't alter the images themselves don't put filters on them don't add text to your to your image um, so the one one tip I want to give you so those are those are about photo editing and maybe you already know some of them but I'm gonna give you three um, I'm gonna give you three <laughs> three different programs you can use that are free programs uh, video uh, photo editing um, programs and fairly simple and intuitive to, to use um, a really popular one seems to be Canva I hear I hear people using that one a lot so that's that's one um, uh, pick monkey is another and stencil is the third now of course there's many more than three out there so you want to go and search uh for uh different programs out there then go ahead and do that because there's there's a ton more and that can be a little project in and of itself right finding the right program that you want to work with but within these programs what i really want to tell you about because this your submission needs to be under one megabyte and taking a picture with a camera is likely to be above one megabyte or possibility depending depending what the picture is um so you want to resize it and lots of times when you take a picture um the, the 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 actual size the dimensions of the image is going to be much bigger than it needs to be certainly much bigger than we need to be able to judge it uh properly um, so you can just go in and resize your image. It might be like thousands of pixels. Lots of times I see a portrait like, um, I don't know the exact numbers, but I'm just going to say 2000 by 4000. Like that's not the exact dimension, but I'll see them like in the thousands of pixels, right? You can really bring that all the way down to like a, th a thousand um, in your in your length or your your width and you're going to be able to cut that size so the megabyte you're going to be able to cut that size down drastically so that is your photography tip i'm just taking a look here to make sure i didn't oh i also wanted to mention about file na naming yeah so um those those programs so you can do your photo editing in there um and uh and you can also if you want to do do some minor just putting some of the pictures you've you've taken and put them into one um one uh document one file then you can do that as well just remember don't manipulate don't don't change the pictures themselves just use the video uh video editing i can't wait till i get to that video and share about that because i just want that to come out of my mouth all the time the, photo editing um, programs. So you can use them to resize and you can use them to put um, a couple of images together that is taste. And remember, this is a work of art. You can you can have those images, or two images, three or four, um, blended together in a lot of a lot of different ways, or placed on a on a uh, in a file in a few different ways. So one other thing I want to mention is that there is a special file naming um, process, and it is written in there in the instructions, and also on the contest entry form. You're going to see it uh, even when you put it in there that that format that your file need, needs to be named on. And that's really important. Um, a couple of reasons, it really helps on our end when we're going through submissions because we wanna do blind judging. We don't want the judges to really know what, um, who it's from. That file naming really helps helps it to identify, make sure we've got the right entry information with the right, with the right file. Um, and it is also helpful um, because it's really good to follow instructions. Lots of things in life to do this. So this is an opportunity to just um, really understand what the instructions are, especially for, for kids, right? So pass this on to your kids about this is the format that needs to be followed and we need to make sure we follow it this way. And it, and it is, it's the age category and the, the file naming is the age category, your um, artistic category, and then, and then you all the images doesn't matter what um I shouldn't say all images but your submission is always going to have the um the title you're going to title your 
uh, your work of art there. And so your title is also going to be in the file name. So there is your photography tips. And um, uh, this video will will be around for the whole, and I'll probably reference to it uh, a couple times in, in some of our, our, uh, our e-blasts that go out to our list. And we're going to, of course, let all our subscribers know about it. Um, we'll, we'll reference these videos back again so you can come right to them and get all these little tips. So with this contest that we're doing in April, um, uh, first, when we thought of this, it was very much about like, what kind of support can we give homeschooling families and, and even families at different age. And it kind of came up with this homeschooling, like growth, like growing in homeschool. Spring has lots of growth. So we kind of connected that about growth in homeschooling as well. And um, as, as part of, so we're the Canadian schoolhouse. We're part of the old schoolhouse that has been around for actually 20 years, um, is uh, we're celebrating 20 years this year, 2021. Um, and for this celebration, of course, we needed something special. So we have created these pillars and these pillars are very relatable to the homeschooling life, but also very relatable to our life as Christians. Um, I have loved kind of pouring over these and being able to, uh, as they were introduced at the beginning of the year to, to everybody within our organization that, um, that is just all these, all these different um, pillars. We've got our, I'm going to go backwards here. Okay. Make sure I'm looking at the right way. Our pillar of faith. Uh, knowledge, hope, and future. So I'm actually going to just share a little bit about each of those in these in these weekly videos as well. We've got four videos, we've got four pillars, we've got four uh, contest entries, and it just seemed to all work together well. So first, I want to share a little bit about that pillar of faith, and really our pillar of faith. And and as Christians, I mean, I I have felt. Um, pretty much from the get-go. And that was actually really when I came to know God. I, I have not been a Christian my whole life, really just the past, just a little over 10 years. Um, I guess 13 years, because I, I put that, I'm able to, to that goes right along with my um, my middle son when he was born, and he's 13 now. So uh, I, I really didn't, I, I really did not make the choice to homeschool uh, as much um, as, as my God-given right, as just something that God instilled in me to to raise my children with that came a little bit later than though and now that is probably my primary reason why I continue to homeschool and also why I try to advocate for um for other families to homeschool and just show how it can work for your family because homeschooling is different for different people um like it's it's it it's very there's not two families i have never met another family yet in all my years of homeschooling so even 13 years of being um learning about homeschooling reading books on homeschooling um, um we really didn't start real structured homeschooling maybe till my son was about seven so we're getting on six six or seven years now of really steady and and very very much in the homeschooling community for seven years um but that starting homeschooling phase is, uh, or or considering homeschooling. Um, I want you to pull from your faith a lot from that, and that and that's where you got to start with because you don't know as much when you're starting out. Um, you you need to get filled with that information. You need to have faith that God is putting you in the right direction. And even if you find you don't have a real close relationship with God if that's just not where you are in your your journey right now please also just just rely on the faith that you are instinctually um, equipped to be able to teach your children that does not mean you have to know all the subjects right because we have great great companies so many great companies that offer the resources that we can that more or less the resources teach, right? We are there to guide and to um, to, to show and to just be able to, um, just to be able to guide our children in the way they should go. Um, and one of the resources we have for you, so also these four, four weeks that we are gonna do these and we're gonna talk about each of the pillars, we're gonna um, have a resource for you specifically for kind of those different stages of homeschooling. So we're starting now with that um, considering homeschooling stage, but even if you've been homeschooling for a little while, this is gonna be really great for you. So the resource is homeschooling, uh, incredible, homeschooling's incredible growth. So it goes through a little bit of the demographics. This is a great, um, 
ebook. So it's an ebook. You can go and get that. And uh, Christine will put the, as she is mentions there, she's got the link there in the comments. So go in uh, and get that ebook and, and um, go through it all. But it's going to really give you a lot of information um, about the different types of homeschooling. It's going to give you stories from real homeschoolers and, and just sharing a bit about what their homeschooling life. And you're going to find that they are so different. And yours is going to be different too. The way that you homeschool, the way that you raise your family, the way that you do things within your home, or the way you do things um, traveling, uh, traveling abroad, traveling around, and uh, just homeschooling, uh, educating your children is really your God-given right. And you can do it better than anybody else can only for the reason that God has put those children in your care. So I hope that that is a little inspiration for you. I hope that you will go and get that ebook on the uh, contest page site. Um, and probably you won't have a contest submission right now. Um, but go go and get your ebook. Go get that uh, free resource for you. Really, really excellent stuff in there to encourage your um nature study with your kids and and then also go and get that resource um to just to just get you more equipped remember you're already naturally equipped but just get you a little bit more in in knowledgeable about the homeschooling community because it is big it is vast and there is a place for you in it that's it for now i will see you next monday